Every fan loves when their team wins the offseason, big money contracts, bring smiling faces, come spring training. But how many of these contracts actually pay off? Today, we begin the journey to evaluate the five biggest contracts each year from 2000 to 2019. The best and worst each year will be pitted against each other until we've determined the dollar for dollar best contract of the last two decades and the worst. Hopefully by the end we can determine if winning the offseason brings a promise of prosperity in October or a curse of caustic leadership. Our first stop on this adventure is the year 2000. Let's meet the men who signed the biggest free agent deals that offseason. Our first contestant, having moved on from Cincinnati to the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, is Greg Vaughn. Posting a 5.4 war over the three seasons of his contract, Vaughn was paid over $24 million, giving the Rays a price of $4.46 million per win or just over 6.6 million in 2019 numbers. Next up, we have Chuck Finley. After 13 successful seasons with the Halos, he signed with Cleveland on a three-year, $27 million deal. He only played two and a half of the three years of his contract being moved on to St. Louis at the deadline of 2002. Finley's 6.3 war over the two and a half years cost Cleveland $2.85 million per win, or $4.2 million in 2019 numbers. The third contract for our contenders goes to Texas in their signing of Kenny Rogers, leaving the Mets for $22.5 million over three years. Rogers played out his entire contract, accruing 10 more for the Rangers, giving them a value of $2.25 million per win or $3.3 million in 2019 numbers. For our next contract, we move out west to Seattle as they signed John Oldry to a three-year $20 million deal. For their investment, the Mariners got 14 war over the full three seasons. His value per war was an impressive $1.4 million or $2.1 million in 2019 numbers. Our final spot for 2000 belongs to Darren Oliver, who signed on to be teammates with Kenny Rogers in Texas. His three-year $90 million contract, of which he spent two years with the Rangers, produced a negative .4 war. That means the Rangers ate $12.6 million on the contract, or the equivalent of $18.7 million in 2019 numbers. Now that we've met the players, let's rank them and find out who will be moving on. Fifth place obviously goes to Oliver, with a negative war there was no way to keep him from entering the loser's bracket. Fourth place goes to Greg Vaughn. At the adjusted 2019 numbers, $7 million a win is just not good enough. It was a tight race for second place as the two starters dueled it out, with Finley posting a fine adjusted $4.3 million a win and Rogers sporting a $3.9 million price tag. Both hurlers came in below our expected dollars per win for starters. We'll have to give the edge to Rogers in this case as his ratio is just a bit better, but there was no stopping Oliver from moving on. With an adjusted Adjusted $2.1 million per win, he was not only a value for the Mariners, he was an absolute steal and should be an early favorite for best big money signing of the millennium. With our first entries in the winners group being Olerud and our first loser being Oliver, we'll have to see how things pan out going forward for Finley and Rogers. Perhaps a wild card spot could see them reemerge as the next round will take into account other aspects of the player's tenure besides dollars per win. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we need to move into the 2000 offseason. With big names and bigger money, the competition is just getting started. Entering the heart of the steroid era. First up for the 2000 season, you know him, you hate him. The man that broke free agency, it's Alex Rodriguez. Landing in Texas for an astonishing $250 million over 10 years, this would start an unprecedented streak of being the highest paid player for the next 17 consecutive seasons. Having a $25 million player on a team with a payroll under $90 million meant that A-Rod was destined to move on before the ink was dry on his contract. Spending only three years in the team before being traded to the Yankees, A-Rod accrued an impressive 18.1 war over that span, costing the Rangers $4.17 million per win, which is roughly $6 million a win in 2019 numbers. Not bad, but a bit of an overpay. Next up, we have another big name juicer from this generation, Manny Ramirez. His $160 million contract over eight years was the second highest of the offseason. He stayed with the Red Sox for seven and a half of the eight years in a deal that produced an impressive 33.1 more. The value to the Red Sox was $4.5 million a win, or about 6.5 in 2019 numbers. Manny being Manny brought great times to the Red Sox, but again, a slight overpay for the production. Third up, we have our first pitcher. Coming off a World Series appearance and an NLCS MVP, Mike. Hampton inked a $121 million eight-year contract with the Rockies. Not known as a pitcher's haven, the thin air of Colorado didn't agree with the lefties breaking pitches, and it produced a negative 1.6 war over its two full seasons in the Mile High City. 
Our last big name, but not our last big contract, goes to the evil empire at the beginning of their reinvention from homegrown talent to big money free agents. With the signing of the Moose, Mike Mussina. Mussina signed a six year, $85.5 million deal. His second best on the list, 29 more over the full six seasons, gave the Yankees a value of just over $3 million a win, or $4.4 million in 2019 numbers. Finally, we have Darren Dreyford, for our second pitcher named Darren on this list to post a disappointing war. A re sign by the Dodgers' his $55 million five year deal lasted only three seasons due to injury costing the Dodgers to eat at least $33 million of the contract for a .3 war. His price tag was $11 million per one-tenth of a win, meaning the Dodgers would have had to pay him $110 million to get one win share out of him, or the equivalent of $158 million in 2019 numbers. Ouch. Okay, so let's look at our winners and losers from the 2001 class. Last place again is going to a pitcher sporting a negative war. It was known then, as it is now, that Mike Hampton's contract was a bad deal. And while the third highest on the list in terms of dollars, it's number one on the list for worst of the worst of 2001. We have super agent Scott Boris to thank for the number 4 spot. Darren Dreifert didn't deserve the money and it showed, with his abysmal performance of .3 war over 3 seasons. He got the bag but didn't deliver. Third place goes to Manny Ramirez, a good value at $6.5 million a win in 2019 numbers. Manny is a definite wild card spot holder and his contributions to his team may be the difference maker for his candidacy going forward. Second up is another Boris baby, A-Rod. His outstanding 18 war over two seasons gave the Rangers the equivalent of $6 million a win, but his Uber contract kept him from topping this year's list, and with him being with the Rangers for such a short amount of time, I don't think we could even give him a wild card spot, even if he did come in second place. That leaves our 2001 representative for the best of the best as Mike Mussina. The Hall of Fame pitcher gave the Yankees stability, longevity, and value at $4.4 million a win in 2019 numbers, and he did it all while pitching in the era's toughest division. Let's take a look at our bracket so far. For the best of the best, we have John Olerud and Mike Mussina, two quiet professionals who played in New York but were often overshadowed by their bigger name teammates. Our losers bracket now sports two pitchers, Darren Oliver and Mike Hampton. Paying for pitching is a tough business, as what plays in one city might not translate to another. Our wildcard bracket now holds three names. Manny Ramirez joins Chuck Finley and Kenny Rogers. Time to take a look at the 2001 offseason and our candidates for 2002. The juice is loose in 2002. Big money spending Yanks land 2000 AL MVP Jason Giambi for $120 million. He plays out the entire seven years on the contract, giving the Yankees a $5.45 million per win value, or $7.7 .7 million for 2019. Next up is the only man who found a way to literally make his head bigger. Barry Bonds. He re-signs with the Giants for a 5-year $90 million deal. His 36.2 war over the 5 seasons is top of this class. Giants got an impressive $2.48 million per win value or a 2019 value of $3.53 million. Up third, we have the Korean transplant cashing in with the always big spending Rangers. Chan Ho Park was signed for a 5-year $65 million contract, posting a disastrous 1.2 war over the 3.5 years he spent there. Throw another L on the board for big money pitchers, as this deal cost the Rangers 37 Point nine million million a win, or an astonishing $53.8 million in 2019 numbers. For our fourth contestant, we have another free agent leaving the A's, Johnny Damon. The AL East arms race heats up with a 40-year $31 million contract. Damon flat out produced the Red Sox, and given the lower cost, the Red Sox got a value of $1.88 million a win, or $2.67 million per win in 2019 numbers. Last up, we have another Hall of Fame pitcher, John Smoltz. Staying with the Braves, Smoltz signed a three-year $30 million contract. Moving from the staff to the bullpen, the Braves rode his 6.6 .6 war to a value of $4.5 million a win, or $6.45 million in 2019 numbers. Not the most impressive number on this list, but remember this is a relief pitcher so it's still a good deal. Let's go to the podium. Finally, we don't have a negative war player, but again, pitching proves too hard to predict as the Rangers swing and miss with Chan Ho Park. His 2019 adjusted $54 million per win price tag sank the Rangers team already saddled with big contracts. A good year to sign big money names, the rest of the players prove good values. Fourth place goes to the Yankees with Jason Giambi. His value was $7.7 million dollars was fair but not good enough for the ultra competitive year. Third place sees Hall of Famer John Smoltz's contract. The Braves in that 5.5 million dollar per win investment paid off. A great pitcher found a way to give value after an injury but not good enough to be in the top two. Our runner up for 2002 goes to Barry Bonds and the Giants. Shocking maybe as his 36.2 war is by far the highest of the class but his impressive value of just $6.5 million a win just wasn't enough to grab the top spot. But with that value, we'll have to give Bonds a wildcard spot. That leaves our number one spot to Johnny Damon. His fourth highest contract of the year was $20 million less than Parks in third place. This lower cost and 16.5 war gave the Red Sox the best value of 2002 at the adjusted 2019 numbers of $2.7 million per win. And knowing what he does for the Red Sox, we may just have met our leader for best contract of the episode. Back to the leaderboard. Damon joins Ulrich Musina. This is shaping up to be a great showdown. 
For our worst of the worst, it's yet another pitcher, this time Chan Ho Park. His positive war should play well against Oliver and Dryford. Finally, we had Bonds the wild card. His insane production should make him a favorite to get out of this group. Three years down and two to go. Let's move on to 2003 as we have some new teams joining the pay to win game. 2003 brings some new faces out to play. An all NL year for the top five. We have a pretty decent return on investment outside of one big exception. Our first player moves to the NL for the first time with the Phillies. It's Jim Tomei. Maybe not the best contract seeing that it was a six year deal which he played only three years of because Ryan Howard was ready to go. He accrued six war over the three seasons of the $85 million contract. Tomei returned a value of $7 million a win or the equivalent of $9.85 million in 2019 numbers. Up next we have another 90s Braves pitcher but this time going to the Mets. Tom Glavin signed on to play in the Big Apple for three years at $35 million. His respectable 10.5 war gave the Mets an ROI of $3.3 million per win or 4.6 in 2019 numbers. Third up is former Met Edgardo Alfonso. He signs with the Giants for $26 million over four years. He spent three seasons with the Giants and produced an abysmal negative 0.2 war, leaving the Giants to eat $19.5 million on his three-year deal. Next, we head back to New York with the signing of Cliff Floyd. Signing for four years at $26 million, Floyd accrued 7.7 .7 more over the full contract. This gave the Mets a price tag of $3.37 million per win, translating to $4.69 million in 2019 numbers. Finally, for 2003, we have the Big Hurt, re-signing with the White Sox. Thomas inked a four-year deal worth $22.5 million. He played only three years in the deal and amassed just 3.6 war. Even with the low war total, the White Sox got a fair deal, with $4.67 million a win, or $6.5 million in 2019 conversion. Let's see how our class of 2003 ranks. Much to my dismay, my personal favorite, Agarro Alfonso and his negative war, just isn't going to cut it, costing the Giants to eat the equivalent of $19.5 million. This will end up making him the first position player on our worst of the worst list. Fourth place goes to Jim Tomey. I'm sure the Phillies wouldn't have signed the deal if they knew then what they know now and how quickly Howard would be ready to go. With a cost of 9.85 million adjusted dollars per win, fourth place is the best Tomey's going to get. Third place ends up being Thomas's contract. Not the greatest production, but his adjusted 6.5 million dollars per win shows that the deal wasn't great, but certainly could have been worse. The top two spots go to the Mets. With a difference of just under $60,000 in dollars per win, it's hard to pick a winner. But rules are rules. And Cliff Floyd's $4.5 $4.6 million a win is just a hair behind Glavin. Some pitches are a bust and some earn their paycheck. Tom Glavin was the latter. He's adjusted $4.63 million per win, just dekes out Floyd, and puts him as our second pitcher in the best of the best category. Floyd will have to settle for a wild card spot. One more check on the leaderboards before we move into the last year of this episode. Glavin becomes a second Hall of Fame pitcher on the best of the best list, joining Mike Mussina. As much as it pains me, Fonzie will be our first position player on the worst of the worst list. Hate to see him there, but the rules are the rules. That leaves Floyd as this year's addition to the wildcard list. Great value but heavy competition in this category could spell bridemaid status for the lefty slugger. One more year to go before closing out our 2000-2004 edition of this list. Three more teams will join our list for the first time as the action moves to the AL for the 2004 season. The all AL class kicks off with the Orioles signing of Miguel Tejada. His six year $72 million contract was the highest of the winter. The Orioles deal paid off with 20.1 war over four seasons. Their return of $2.3 million per win has to put this in the plus column. His impressive adjusted 2019 value of $3.2 million per win leaves this big signing as an early favorite to lead the 2004 class. The Angels started the buying frenzy of 2004 with their signing of Vladimir Guerrero to a 5-year $70 million deal. His 22.1 war over that span tops this year's list with an ROI of $3.17 million a win. You have to give the Angels a W for this one. His adjusted 2019 value of $4.27 million shows that some year big money investments pay big dividends. Third high his contract this year goes to Bartolo Colon and the Angels. His four-year $51 million deal snake bit the Halos, as he accrued only 4.2 war over the entire contract. The Angels spent $12.14 million a win for Colon, and that number looks even worse when adjusted to its 2019 $16.39 million. Batting cleanup this year is Pudge Rodriguez. The Hall of Fame catcher cashed in with Detroit as they came together on a four-year $40 million deal. Pudge put up 11.8 war over the contract from behind the dish and gave the Tigers a value of $3.39 million per win, or 4. million. 7 million in 2019 numbers. Last up this year, we have Gary Sheffield switching leagues and landing with the Yankees. The three year $39 million deal squeezed what value they could out of the aging slugger. Amassing 8.7 more over the three years of the deal, the Yankees got a value of $4.48 million per win, or $6.05 million in 2019 numbers. Not bad for a guy in his late 30s. Let's rank him. Fifth place goes to everyone's favorite doughboy, Bartolo Colon. This ageless wonder just couldn't put it all together in Anaheim, as his 4.2 war was destined for the bottom of the list in this top heavy year. Fourth place goes to another old-timer, Gary Sheffield. 
failed. His above average ROI wasn't enough to crack the top three, as the younger sluggers of the class just couldn't be caught. An extremely tight race for second place lands Ivan Rodriguez in the third spot. His $4.57 million per win was just edged out by second place, but we're going to have to give him wildcard spot considering the minuscule difference between him and second place. Vladimir Guerrero lands in that spot with a value of $4.27 million per win. His tenure in LA was the win the Angels needed as they went one for two in this free agent class. That leaves our top spot to the Orioles and their rare venture into the big money offseason signings. Miguel Tejada continued his excellence after the change of coast by giving the Orioles an ROI of $3.22 million a win and our first shortstop on the best of the best list. Okay, so that does it for 2000 to 2004. Let's take a last look at who will be moving on. Tejada rounds out the best of the best list with three position players and two pitchers. The worst of the worst list adds Bartolo Colon. His positive war will probably be enough to keep him from moving on. Finally, we have our 2004 wild cards to add. Vladimir Guerrero and Ivan Rodriguez. Something about Russian first names and Hispanic last names make good baseball players. What do you think of the first brackets? Any surprises? Someone left off that should have been there? Next episode will be running through the post-steroid years of 2005 to 2009. After we get through all those years, we'll choose one wildcard winner from each bracket to join the best of the best lists. From there, we'll choose a best of the best and a worst of the worst from each five-year period to face off against each other until we've discovered the best and the worst contracts of the millennium. Until next time, thanks for watching. Give us a like if you like this or a sub to make sure you catch the rest of the series. See you all next time.